All right. Hello. We are live. <laughs> Welcome to Hot Girl Book Club, currently Messy Girl Book Club, because I, I just finished the book at 329 with like 30 seconds to spare. Rachel, would you like to share with the class? <laughs> I didn't finish it yet, but... Um, that, that's okay. This is actually, it means not okay. It's becoming my reputation in a bad way, but I've been speeding through it. I read the majority of it today and by of it, I mean like the majority of what I have already read so far. So I would say I'm like halfway ish through the book. That's generous, but I'm halfway <laughs> enough through the book that I'm okay with doing some spoilery stuff and catching up later. Um, so I like it so far. Yeah. I feel it. like it's kind of fun because we can talk about like your predictions and impressions yeah. and um, like what you think is going to happen, where you think it's going, and then uh, full knowledge, Rachel, later on, we'll, we'll get to reflect. Yeah. Actually, you know, this is fun. There's like, um, there's a podcast that I love. It's called Overdue. And there's one person who read the book and one person who didn't. So in this case, like I have some base knowledge because I read some of the book but you can oh. explain it and I can be like, what? They're going to do this. So it's, it's sort of that we have a little dynamic here. It's, it's not the reading rush. I keep telling people, oh, I'm rush. sorry. No, we did. We did actually do the thing. That's why I am looking rough because I've been <laughs> <laughs> married to my chair today, reading, reading this book. And I just put the dust jacket back on and I'm, it's, it's so, so pretty. pretty. It's so it's pretty. pretty. I just want to like display it on my bookshelf now. You the know? one thing is I am a little bit sad that not every single one of the girls or actually all the characters, the main characters are on the cover because when I first started reading it and started describing them, I was like, oh my God, that's her. The one oh, with blue hair. Yeah. That, oh, so that's her. And then I was like, wait, aren't there supposed to be like 11 of them? But there are only, I think, eight on the cover because there's, or maybe nine. Oh, yeah. because this is Paelli, and then there's the three here, there's a three on the back, and then there's actually two right here. Oh my god! But there's, that's it, I think, unless, maybe if you take the dust jacket off, it continues? Nope, my, well, my, uh, <laughs> That would have been cool. That would have been very cool, but, yeah, um, that was the one thing where I was like, ah, because I, I love to have a visual. I do love to, like, truly imagine, because there are so many characters yeah. in this book, it's very difficult to keep track of every single yes. person I yeah I was worried about that when I started the book and they introduced them as being like ah the 12 wild ones and I was like whoa 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 this is like 300 <laughs> pages like how am I gonna get all 12 of them um but I feel like it kind of it kind of worked yeah I, I think I mean at least for me at the point where I am I don't necessarily feel like I need to know everything about each character um like Paelli is obviously uh, the main 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 wild one because um she is the one that sort of started this whole thing and then what's his name it's tarana you want to say tarana yeah pronunciation so tarana i have like a basic visual because he's the only main man um who isn't the bad guy so that's that's something and then i think like valentina and maybe a couple of the other characters i can kind of get an idea of who they are based on how often they say things and what they say. Right. I think Paelli is the one who's always like, oh my God, I want a mango. And Valentina is like, why do you want a mango right now? <laughs> we have things to do. So like, I can I can relate with her. Um, but I mean, it's kind of fun. Like there's just all these different characters that we meet, even like the, the mid-worlder type of characters mm -hmm. that we just sort of meet along the way. And I don't, I don't know how relevant they will be at the overarching plot, but it's just kind of fun in a sense of like, there doesn't need to be perfect set rules for this book. Of, yes. like, this character does this and therefore they're necessary for the plot, but like they serve the purpose in the location where they currently are and what they're doing. And they kind of build out the rest of this world, I think. Yeah. That's how I felt too. I think when I like the first reading session, it probably within the first 20 pages I read, I like made a note in my phone that it was giving me like half and half vibes of the power that we buddy read together and the 10,000 doors of January, which I recently read. And I don't know if you've read, um, I did. and both well, yeah, of those, I think that's the one where I chatted with you on Instagram and I was like, this was a solid three star for me, but I, yeah, me too. 
And then you were like, yeah, it was a three star. It was a whole three yeah. star. Yeah. And like both of those I felt like mediocre about, but I liked I liked the vibes and like what they were trying to do. Mm -hmm. And then just within the first few pages of the wild ones i was like okay this has like the whimsical aspect of the Ten Thousand doors and also i felt like paheli had what, what was it eve in the power where she was kind of like the the yeah. self-proclaimed leader like, of this uh, like the new goddess or, or prophet kind of she was like a prophet that led all these people so paheli in that way is kind of like the one guiding the way for all of these women um, although yes. I definitely think like the power, obviously like the power is more of like a, um, like criticism and analysis of our life through the lens of like, what if this one weird thing happened? Whereas in this book, it seems like, I mean, I like it, but I think there are certain things about this book that make me think like, this is very, l like these people are so nice to each other, basically. Yes. Like, yes. Oh, like, they're like, they're very fully like developed in their brains where like they can communicate with each other and they're so nice they don't have stuff where like like if they're mean it's only in like a teasing way with each other yeah um, and like they just have like this I, I know that they're usually supposed to be like a lot older and they just look a certain age because that's the age at which they became a wild one but um mm -hmm. I mean, in some ways I like that because I'm like, oh, this is kind of wholesome. Like, I like that. In other ways, I'm like, totally. this is not realistic because you get, but I'm also like, maybe it is because they're all supposed to be like 85 or older or something. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely felt the same way about that. And even uh, like as the book goes on, that becomes like one of my favorite parts about it because there's all of these like little vignettes. What are the, it's called like the Book of Memories. Or yes. is it the Book of Mysteries? The Book of Memories. So there's like little inserts from like each of the girls and you get the idea of like, oh, like they all deeply know these horrible traumas. And so because yeah. of that, they know how to like be kind and soft to each other where it was just like, wow, like that is so like beautiful. I thought was one of the coolest parts of the book. Yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite parts as it is. I think each of the ones, I think I've only read maybe two or three so far. Um, me? Oh, I've definitely read at least three, maybe three or four at this point. But I think each one I read, um, I find like I like it more and more because mm -hmm. they're not things that like I've personally experienced. But I think the writing is done in such a way where it gives you just enough information that you're like, I can really see what that would be like. So yeah. for instance, like, I think the first one, if I'm not mistaken, is by Tele. Mm. And um, it's talking about basically like her being in a relationship with a married man. Oh, and, yeah. Um, she like, I don't know, just like the way that she writes where it's like, I saw her once, his wife, another four letter word, she, blonde hair, wide smile, eyes green with laugh lines, fanning out, graceful, dressed in the soft colors of security, the whole to his half. I realized that then I had no part in their equation. I was the artificial construct, the other. And it's like, ooh, I like that. Like, you know, it's like the, the description of it is definitely very reminiscent of like when you're very young and you kind of experience your first like, I'm deep thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. in a way, like, you know? Um, and, and it, it does read in a way that I think makes sense because most of these characters are something like 20 something, maybe like, uh, late teens when they became a wild one. So this is what they were thinking and what happened to them during right. their life. Um, and so like, you know, it's, it's fleshed out enough that it's not like super cringe where it's like a 13 year old writing about like oh my god one day i did this thing and it was so cool and you're like <laughs> exactly but you know it, it has like some level of like the maturity but um like the youthfulness of experiencing your first like really major heartbreaking event and then writing about that and you know doing so in such a way that i really feel like i can see what this person was experiencing just from this very tiny glimpse into their past. And I think that's what's really cool about it because each of these little like book of memories is really only like a snapshot of something that happened. Yeah. But it doesn't require all of the details of what happened because you can kind of, you know, I, I would assume that a lot of people who might identify as a woman could look at this and be like, 
I kind of know what this is like, even if I haven't experienced it, because I get what it might be like to be in this place. Yes. Yes. Um, so this is actually like one of the like discussion things that I mentioned before we went live. Uh, to anyone watching, the book club is on the app Fable, which is like an app for book clubs, and all of the books on Fable have built-in discussions. So I'm going to be like reading some questions from that. And one of them is, how did the excerpts from the Book of Memories deepen your connection to the Wild Ones? Was there one vignette that you found particularly compelling, and if so, why? So we're kind of like already down that train. Um, but some of my favorite ones that I don't think you are there yet, so I will give you page numbers, because I don't feel like these are like spoilers or anything, but page 180 is Cambodia's, and page 226 is Valentina's. And Cambodia's is like, you you kind of feel like, okay, like, was she, like, what was, what was she doing? It's kind of like evocative. Valentina's is one sentence, and it's just, I was once a king. And I'm like, what like Whoa. it just the rest of them are just like poems or paragraphs you know and valentina's it says valentina city of origin paris i was once a king i'm like that makes me want to reread the entire book to like learn more about her oh i know I, mean, I think if i had to pick one i really do like valentina it might just because be because i had a brass doll named valentina who was my favorite but also i like her character in general and i i love that that's very cool I like that she's the only one that really like snaps back at Paheli. Yeah, yeah. Like I think they even said at some point like she's the only one that has the courage to do it, and like Paheli never like chastises her for it. Like she just yeah. is allowed to do that. They are like get to do that to each other. Um, oh, that reminds me. What do you think of the writing style being like in first person plural? Yeah. Okay. So. I was thinking about this before when I started reading this, I think yesterday, and we kind of chatted about this on sprints. Um, so, I mean, like, it definitely is reminiscent of stuff that I used to write when I was young, girl. <laughs> and um, I, I think I like it sometimes and other times I don't. Um, basically, like, I do like the idea of kind of writing in this way that feels a bit more poetic, and I think it connects the audience a little bit more, but other times, which was also a problem I found in my own writing, it feels like it has a little bit of a sense of like condescension attached to it, if that makes sense. So mm. it's like, we are the ones who do this, as you may know, you know, blah, blah, blah. But like that, that's fine. But then sometimes it'll just be like tiny little sentences where it's like, it has always been this way. You do not ask of the things that we do. And it's kind of like, but I want to know, like, what? Yeah. You know? and they're just like, you do not answer to the thing that calls in the night and I'm like but what does that mean like so sometimes <laughs> it's like you know it it's cool but sometimes it takes it a little bit too far to a point where I'm kind of like this feels a little bit pretentious and I kind of just want to get more to the meat of it but um I mean I do think it's hard for me to separate that from like the times in my life when I was writing stuff like that it was not a time where I was like I am so happy and my life is great. It was mostly a time where I was like, I'm experiencing a lot of stress and like I'm struggling a lot and it's hard for me to do anything about this. So I do remember just like writing to try to like get that emotion out. And that was the style that I naturally just leaned towards. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know why necessarily, maybe it was kind of like, if I write this as like, we are this way, you and I, then it was more of like a mutual experience with the reader. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, maybe that's partially why it works well with this, because this is a story about the trauma of all these different women who found solace in one another and then are writing to you, the reader, who, you know, in some way, may sh shape or form, maybe you do relate with them more strongly with one person or another because of your own past. So, yeah. I kind of do like it for that reason. I think it works well with this story. It's not my favorite writing style for every story, but in this case, for sure. it works. Yeah, I think so. I think it works really well with the like ongoing theme of sisterhood throughout the book is that it's written in like we and us. And then Paheli's chapters are in like her own first person narrative, yeah. but like the rest of the wild ones is like, a collective, collective and I, I found that like really interesting 
Yeah. Actually, speaking of that, I was so surprised when, um, like, at the very beginning, it explains Paheli's story. And it just kind of says, like, you know, she was the girl who did this. And she experienced this difficult thing. And then she ran away. And this is what happened. And yeah. so I was like, oh, OK, so maybe this is, like, you know, the origin story of someone who's, like, very well revered. And, like, I don't know who the wild ones are yet. So maybe it's, like, you know, a whole collective that's almost like she's like the prophet kind of like we're talking about with the power so i was like oh she's like highly revered people probably look up to her maybe they like worship her like i don't know who she is and then like two chapters later valentine was just like yelling at her and i was like you can't talk like that to her <laughs> what How dare you <laughs> what? and for a long time i was like i can't believe the insolence of what and then finally i was like okay i think maybe i had some preconceived notions that are being challenged here okay all right I understand. That's not what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, um, I guess, okay, before we go further, I don't think we did my ratings or your ratings. Yes. What would you rate it right now if you had to rate it right now? Right now? Um, I feel like I'm actually enjoying this a lot more than almost everything else I've been reading the last two weeks. So that's okay. probably, um, skewing me with my score more but i think it's definitely leaning more towards like a four star i'm not like totally totally in love with it for some of the reasons i already listed but i do find it really interesting and i just love um like you know getting immersed in a new fantasy world and the way that it's being built out with the atmosphere and the writing um from place to place i really do like learning about the magic system in that way and also just yeah. kind of seeing like as they travel from location to location there is um, you know, writing skill there because each one you kind of feel like really is a different place. Yes, I love that too. You know, exciting to see they're like, I'm, I'm now at the chapter where they're in NOLA and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this is different from before, but I still love it. And each one kind of has a whole thing about like, there is deep old magic here and that's mm -hmm. why we travel here. I'm like, cool. I love hearing about this. They just did oh like, God. not heisty, yeah. but kind of heisty thing. You know, I think it was Paris maybe i'm wrong about that but they were i was skimming really fast in that section so i don't remember exactly oh, when they were when they met the bad guy yeah shot is that his bar. Name? it's a bar something bara 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 i feel bar? like it was bar barish bar barish barish right right, right. Yes. yeah i don't know i don't think that was paris but I don't remember like the specific name of it either, but everywhere that I went, like there's a scene, um, a very big scene in Marrakesh uh, later on and a scene in Cairo. And it's like, you're so right that everywhere they go, it feels like now I'm also in Marrakesh and now I'm in Cairo. Like, how do they do that? I've never been to Cairo or Marrakesh, but now I feel like I was there and it felt yeah. different from all the other places. I did really like that. Yeah, I mean, some of these places I'm like, I don't really have any experience in what this even looks like. So I Googled like, what does Beirut look like? So that way I could like kind of get an idea. And I just saw yeah. like the city of skyscrapers and whatnot. But I think there's so much more to it on the ground that you're not gonna get from just travel photos on Google photos. And right. like, right. obviously, you know, you're never gonna really experience the sort of travel from just looking at pictures, although it does help. And usually you would say like, you know, a picture tells a thousand words or whatever. But I feel like in this case, this really painted an entire full picture for me that I felt like I could be in that marketplace. I could smell this thing and I could like, you know, be craving this food that's at this food stall right now. And then be on my way to go to this location where we're going to meet up with this merchant and see what they have and all the different things on display. And it was very easy for me to just picture that yes. just from like, you know, maybe four paragraphs or something. I was like, I yeah. know what it's like. It's cool. Like, it was great. That was one of the most surprising things for me, too, is, like, how good the food writing is. Like, I did yeah. not expect to have, have, like, such rich, detailed, like, sensory food writing, but it does. And, like, everywhere they go, they're talking about the desserts or what they're eating, and it helps to immerse you in, like, where they are. But I'm also so hungry because I mostly marathoned this today. <laughs> And I, I can't wait to, like, cook myself up something because there is such good 
food description yeah, in this book. I was reading this while someone was cooking in the kitchen, and then they were like, can you go grab some mushrooms from the store? And I was like, okay. I, like, ran out, got food, came back, like, smells real good. I have to keep reading now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! But, I mean, it, it really is true. Like the writing in this book is so good because there are certain things that I think. Number one, um, I haven't eaten all this food, obviously, but right. um, these are things that, like you know, I might not be very familiar with, but it sounds so good. And then other things which I have heard of, but I might just like look at a picture of it and be like, I don't know if that tastes good or not. I don't really know if it's sweet or if it's savory or like well, what would this taste like. But you know, from the mind of a person who obviously eats this food and loves it it's very easy to see like why it's so good but i am also the kind of person who's just like you gotta eat this it's just it's so good what's good about it? it's so good I, what, what more do you want me to say it, it tastes good when you put it in your mouth it will taste good right it tastes good eat it but like this this is writing that really like convinces you like yeah i would willingly eat this thing I, even though I know nothing about it, it just sounds delicious. 100%. And I love that Pahaley has this, such a sweet tooth. And it's like mentioned all the time in the book. I think there's one scene where like Pahaley like separates herself and Tarana is pissed off about it. The rest of the wild ones are like upset about it. And Valentina is like, guys, like let's go eat some dessert and we won't save any for Pahaley out of revenge. And it's kind of like this moment of levity and like a really heavy scene. And it's like, nice. Like she just <laughs> likes her dessert and they're going to take that away from her because yeah. they're mad at her. Like it was like this really light kind of thing to do when, when the stakes are high, which is another sign of like really impressive writing that you can throw that in there but i liked that Pahaley, who is this like basically immortal like almost prophet leading this like collective of the sisterhood who just really likes desserts and mangoes I'm like okay like it just makes yeah. sense i mean i like that you know she has that because i think if, if i just said you know the word like prophet or like you know if i had some idea of like what this person is my first assumption about this person would probably be that they're very stoic maybe mm -hmm. like they don't eat very much and they just have like you know tiny portions of things out of like you know a monk type of respect for right. <laughs> whatever um and like you know they probably look in a certain way where they have like very neutral colors and like whatever and meanwhile like that's her like she she's totally breaks the mold on what you would expect maybe yeah that but I love that because that is really like at the crux of this story is that like people always, you know, mistake somebody and say that like they couldn't do X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z. Um, and whether it's because like you're a woman or maybe you're non-binary or you don't fit into this mold of what people expect of you. Um, even in the case of like there was the one girl that they ran into and she was like, I want to go to college or I want to go to school. But my family would only send my brother because he's a boy. And as soon as they marry me off, I'm like spilled milk to them. They don't care. So they're not going to send me off. Yeah. You know, it's stuff like that where they obviously like look for people in those situations. And then they actively say like, you know, no, like it doesn't have to be that way. And, you know, the idea that you have to fit in a certain mold is going to hold you back. But, you know, having characters that are the um, like epitome of the message in the book definitely like really drives that home because it's not just an overarching thing that they point to at the end like see it was all yes. for a reason but it's really built into the whole you know plot and these are the characters that we're following and i also like like you were saying like you know in care in situations where characters can have that kind of like light-hearted thing to break the tension it is sort of like a sign of true like sisterhood and friendship and mm -hmm. you know, real closeness between those characters which is also really nice because i think oftentimes in YA especially, if we have like some girl who is not like other girls, it's always like her versus this person versus whoever. Right. But that's really like totally the opposite of what this is. So it, yes. it does break the mold in like so many different ways just by doing all of those things. I love that. Definitely. And I'm going to come back to a point in a second, but I want to read these comments first. Um, hi, I'm at work. I have to watch this later, but I wanted to say hi. I read the book and I gave it four stars. Amazing. Yay. I, I think I think I am also sitting on four stars right now, but I did like, I am very fresh off of it. And so I, I might honestly raise it later. So we'll see how, how I marinate. 
This is so great because we never agree on anything. I know. I'm like so excited. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, it's so funny because every time you're like, I loved this book. I always like have to hold myself back from talking about my rating where I'm like, I don't want to ruin this for you. It's great. I'm happy for you. And other times where I'm like, I love this book. And you're like, it was like three stars and I have nothing else to say about it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but this is so nice. Like we really have that. This is the book. This this is the one that broke the curse. We have found where the taste intersects. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy about it. <laughs> um, hi, Cammy. I don't know if you're still here, but thank you for coming and saying hi. Hi, hi everyone. I love this book. Amazing. When I originally finished it, it was 4.5. But as I sat with it, it changed to a 5. I agree with the imagery and food stuff. I feel like that might happen to me. Like, I think this might be one that sneaks up on me after the fact. Because I think I am going to be thinking about this and the themes in this for a while. Um, question for you, because you did finish it. Um, what did you think about the pacing of the story? Because I do feel that there were some things that got introduced, like, very fast, but in a way that I enjoyed. Like, you know, <laughs> other, other books, it just makes me think, um, other books that have, you know, had really great imagery sometimes are very slow because they're just trying to build in the world. But so far, I feel like it's moving at a pretty steady pace while also building around it as it goes. Do you find that that's the case or does it change throughout the book? Yes. No, I, I think that's the main reason for my right now four star rating is that I felt like it was so fast, like almost too fast. Mm -hmm. And I would have liked... I mean, I guess I wouldn't have liked another 50 pages because then I would not have finished in time, but I just felt like I wanted more and I wanted more time and more details. And I'm a little bit sad that it's a standalone, quite honestly. I think I just was left, like that's a really good feeling for a book to leave you with, I guess, but I was left like, no, like I, I'm not done. I'm not ready for it to be done. So yeah. I think the pacing was like fast in a good way, but I'm... I don't know. I just wanted to like sit in it longer. Almost like it's on double speed, but I wish it was like 1.75. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is that a good analogy? I don't know. Yes. And I mean, I think this one would be a really good one to reread. Like I may reread and annotate it later on because there were so many uh, like profound wise lines. There was so many just like pretty lines of like descriptive writing. Um, I want to see if I can find hints with some of the like other girls. Like I might like color code them. I'm already thinking about like, rereading this, you know? And I think that's a really good sign oh. as well, having just finished it. So I'm excited about the writing and the pacing to answer your question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even at the point where I am, which is, you know, what maybe, not, not quite at a half, but like somewhere between like a third and a half the way through or something. Um, you know, I mean, like, I've been speeding through it, just, like, basically, like, looking at the page, grabbing as much information as possible, and just flipping to the next page, um, which, you know, is not the easiest thing to do, necessarily, but um, in terms of, like, rushing to finish the book as fast as possible, it works, <laughs> but in terms yeah. of having to, like, sit and enjoy the book and read every single word as it connects to the rest of the sentence, um, I can imagine that in some ways I would find like, it's so descriptive of everything that I can feel like I'm there, but sometimes I want the plot to happen. So the fast pace still works for me because I want to like see everything, but I want, you know, I want the plot to come, you know, and, and work for me. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, kind of like what we were talking about, there are a lot of characters here. So if there is like the need to differentiate between people, I think that you do kind of need some of those details early on before mm -hmm. it's sort of, sort of like a mic drop in the end and then you're like, oh, I better reread it to figure out this thing. So I'm right. not sure if that's really like a strength or a weakness at this point as, as where I am, but um, that's pretty interesting that, you know, this is the sort of book where it's actually not 100% required to know everything about each character because they're yeah. not like interchangeable, but they're all sort of like one entity in a way. Yes. So. Um. Okay, I don't want to spoil things for you yet, but there are there are a few things that come to my dome. I'm sad about the standalone thing too. Not that I felt like the story wasn't complete. I just want more time with the sisters. 100% exactly. Yeah. 
I would like just like more adventures from them, you know? Like this this book was about Tarana and defeating the big bad so that he can become the keeper of the between. But like what about their other adventures? Like I would read the heck out of those. Yeah. This is I mean, yeah, it's it's very easy to imagine what is happening so far. So I can imagine like, you know, as you finish this out, it's sort of like I, I've seen this whole world, like you've built this entire thing for me. I don't want to leave it quite yet because, you know, understanding how the magic works, understanding who these characters kind of are and, you know, what they stand for and each of their little book of memories, like backstory. It's hard to just yeah. let go of them because this is, I mean, a relatively, I guess it's a normal size YA, but it's only like 330 something pages, 340 pages, I think. Yeah, it's like barely... 330 something like that yeah so yeah i don't know that sucks it's only a standalone <laughs> i know i'm a little bit heartbroken the author does have another book out that she wrote before this and now i will definitely be adding that one to my tbr um what was the other book that she wrote mm, it's called i think it's like spin something Maybe it's in here. Oh, it might be in her. The Candle and the Flame. I guess I was way off. I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, wait, she wrote that? Yeah, I her debut YA read. fantasy was the Morris Award finalist, The Candle and the Flame. Oh my god. I didn't read that, but I do know of it. I always react with like, oh, that book? <laughs> and it's always like, I have no other knowledge about it. I just know it. <laughs> I, I react with like the joy of a person who had written the book. And meanwhile, I have no, I could not tell you what it's about, but I'm, that's exciting. I mean, I'm glad that there's something else out there. That's probably, I assume another YA fantasy based on the cover and what little I've seen about it. I think so. Yeah. Um, what else is in my list here? Oh, this is, this is a good one. Yeah. Um, what does the Wild Ones tell us about the importance of healing, and what role does sisterhood play in this process? Tell me, Noel. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, would you like me to spoil some things for you? Okay. Okay. Okay, so disclaimer uh, to the peanut gallery is I guess we will get into official spoilers at this point. Um, so I don't know if you've gotten to the part where Sevda leaves. No. Okay, have they explained what happens when you remove the star from your hand? Um, I feel like somebody mentioned it, but I literally forgot what it was. I just think it was supposed to be like, they're the tears of Tarada, and then yes. if you can take them out, but I, I don't think they, ex maybe they didn't explain it. I think they just said that you could take it out. Okay. So, yeah. So it, there comes a point where they explain like what happens because, um, at the beginning, like, I think Paheli teases, like, there's 12 of us now, but five years ago there was 20 of us. Yeah. And kind yeah, of like, yeah. wait, what? And so later they explain that when one of the Wild Ones takes out the star from her hand, um, she goes back to being, like, only human and basically, like, forgets her time with the Wild Ones mm -hmm. and, like, starts a complete, fresh, new life. Um, so Paheli describes the Wild Ones as being, like, a bus that takes you from point A to point B and like holds space for you while you like heal and go through and process what you need to. And then eventually you're meant to go back to being a human. And so there comes this point because once they kind of throw their weight behind Tirana and like his mission and the danger that he's in, one of the girls, Sevda is like, I don't feel safe. I think I'm ready to go. And so there's this, it's this like very somber moment where the other girls are like, it's okay. Like we support you, you know, Paheli has this like really moving speech about like, you're allowed to feel safe. You deserve to feel safe, like do whatever you need to do to make that happen. And um, even Tarana is like, oh, I feel so guilty. And she's like, no, it's not your fault. And then she like takes the star out of her hand and like leaves it with a note that says, I think it says thank you and I'm sorry or thank you it's not your fault or something like that and it's just like huh 
you know? And so that's like her, she like leaves the sisterhood and just goes back to the human world. Um, and it's kind of, that was the mo moment for me where it was like, okay, this book is about like healing and sisterhood yeah. because they, she had felt like, okay, I've, I feel strong enough Mm -hmm. to go back knowing that I won't remember this. Well, yes. Yeah, but so I also how, know myself that I need to do that. How does that work exactly? So she, like, you know, let's say that she became a wild one at, like, the age of 20, and then she's been a wild one for, like, 50 years or something. So does she return as a 20-year-old to the same spot that she became a wild one, like, in the same hometown or wherever where she was? So the way that it happened with her, I think, like, time just starts like right where it stopped mm -hmm. and so they were in this safe house uh this might have been when they were in cairo i'm not sure it was they were in like some safe house where Pahaley had like a contact there and the wild ones were all in this big like dormitory together when sevda like told them um i'm ready to leave and so they said okay they like said their goodbyes and talked about it and everything and then sevda moved to like a private room um, where she, like, took out her star and then, like, privately left and, like, left the wild ones behind. So her life would have just, like, picked up and started anew in that safe house as if she, like, brought herself there of her own, like, volition without the wild ones. Because, like, she would just make up whatever narrative she needed to, I guess. She wouldn't, she wouldn't see them, though, because they make themselves visible to people if they want to by expending effort, but otherwise they're invisible. So yeah. she wouldn't even see them at all. And she doesn't remember them. But it's yeah. now it's time. So if it was 50 years later, like everybody she knew back then would have aged 50 years, but she's still like 20, I guess. Yeah. Just, so it was like kind of bittersweet for sure. That's super sad. I love that. I, I, love I know. That. I'm like, damn, like, okay, we went there. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm always like a big sucker for like, how do I make this the most tragic thing possible? But still like, not, not just like everybody died to the end, but like, in a way that's like, let me find a way to find like meaning in this thing that is like mm -hmm. sad and tragic in its way, but also is kind of like a story of like, you know, trauma or healing or like, how did this person get to this location and not location, like get to this point in their life, basically. Um, that's really interesting. That makes me want, you know, that makes me like it a lot more. Definitely yeah. read that. Um, that's very cool. Yeah, there was a lot of parts that I really liked as far as like, the plot goes because I feel like especially in YA fantasy there can be a lot of plot armor so to speak or things that happen conveniently and I I didn't really feel that way there was maybe one thing at the end with the way that they kind of like the way that the climax worked with the big baddie and I just felt like like I felt like it was earned but it also felt like oh okay it worked it worked the first time we tried it you know um but I didn't ever feel like anything was like gratuitous or like too easy, uh, which which was nice. Like I felt like we we went through the struggles and they really had to work for the tools and the MacGuffin to get to the place where they could hurt the big bad and all of that stuff. That's, I think like that's actually really important in a story like this because um, you know oftentimes when someone experiences something like trauma, whatever shape it may take, um, it's usually not an experience that anybody off of the street will necessarily understand mm -hmm. so oftentimes they're told something like well it wasn't that bad get over it or like you know oh you could just do this and it will be better and usually it's basically like just try to think of it as a better thing than it was and it will be over and it won't be bad anymore and it kind of is almost like just try and it it'll stop hurting you in, in the end so right. if for a story that is about healing um, to take a route of plot armor being like, if you just try, we can just defeat the bad guy, the end, and it doesn't take any work to get there, would kind of, you know, um, fly in the face of, like, what this whole story is really, you know, the theme of the story is really about. So, you know, like, certain times you may, like, go to therapy and then the answer is to, like, you know, change your thinking, but you mm -hmm. need to, like, acquire the tools to be able to do something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, someone just saying, like, think of it this way, won't like necessarily change your mind so it is sort of like a whole journey and like how do i get better how do i think of this in a way that won't hurt me anymore and then how do i use that to like sort of overcome this thing that has happened to me right 
So um, I wonder if that was like really a purposeful thing that um, was, you know, a choice by the author to continue to like drive this point home. Oh yeah, I definitely think so. There's a part um, also later on where um, Eulalie who like runs the house in New Orleans and is kind of like a, a den mother almost, she has, it's explained that she has this like magic spell where whenever a potential wild one is like in danger or at that point where it's like it's kind of a life or death situation like i'm at the end of my rope like she will get like a ping and Pahaley like goes to that girl so you go to this girl and she's like standing on top of a building and Pahaley goes to her and is like what's up like how how can i make you feel better in this moment and the girl is like um, I was assaulted by my brother-in-law and like tells her this whole story. Pahaley shares her story as well. And the girl says to Pahaley, if I join you, will my pain go away? And Pahaley is like, she like doesn't answer for a while. And then she says something along the lines of over time, it will get dull, but it doesn't go away. Um, but you know, we're here to support you and we've all gone through similar things. And the girl jumps off the building. And so then Pahaley has to, like all of the girls that were there, like they go home and they're just like in mourning and Pahaley is blaming herself. And so then Tarana is the one that's like, it wasn't your fault. And Pahaley is like, it could have been like, I could have said something differently and that might've stopped her from jumping, even if, you know, it wouldn't have necessarily been true. So there's that conversation of like pain and trauma and what that can lead a person to. And so I definitely think that was like a huge, like a huge focus of the book is, is pain and trauma and how people don't necessarily like know how to talk about it or relate to it or to how to say the right thing, like that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really surprising that, like, you know, it goes there. Yeah. I think, you know, something like, hey, we have a magic system where when you're, like, ready to go, you can go, and here's a kind of sad thing that happens. He's like, it's cool, but it's abstract enough that you're kind of just like, oh, that's nice. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that's something. But, you know, something as real as suicide happening in the book mm -hmm. in which the character maybe did or didn't say what they wanted to you know, what they had intended right? And for their action to immediately lead to that um, is like, it's traumatizing first. Yeah. Um, but like that, that's definitely something that you don't see very often, especially in like YA fantasy, I think, because yeah. I mean, again, like kind of back to a plot armor thing. So often YA fantasy is kind of just like, you know, even if somebody dies, they'll be back by the finale. Like, right. Nothing that's actually going to like happen that will have actual consequences for the good guys. They'll be fine. Every time I read a YA fantasy and there's a character who gets like stabbed and it's fatal, I'm like, I I don't I feel nothing because I know they're coming back in like four chapters. So I don't feel upset. I don't feel worried. But like you know, this is a book with stakes that mm -hmm. are, are truly things that you know you might actually see in real life and feel true trauma towards which mm -hmm. I think is cool because this is like, it's a YA fantasy, but a lot of the characters in these worlds are just humans who don't know that there are these different people out there. And so, you know, this idea of like this veneer of magic that most people don't see is something that could directly apply to our lives right now, where you kind of feel like I'm going through this thing, it's horrible, I don't know what to do. And I mean, maybe not every person who would become a wild one necessarily gets pinged, but it is sort of a story that, like, as a, a young person, you might kind of cling to and say, like, there could be something more out there. There could be something that, you know, kind of inspires me to hold on and, you know, realize that there are other people who have this trauma. And it's not a magical fantasy world where this has nothing to do with my life, but it, it has, like, a direct tie-in and anchor to our lives. Mm -hmm. and probably most readers' lives, in a way. Um, so, I mean... That, that is like a kind of a very real moment to happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it was um, really gnarly and like this, yes, I was in mourning too. It was one of those like, ah, oh, I need to put the book down for a second and like yeah. process that that actually just happened. Um, but then, I mean, it kind of sparked this conversation between some of the other wild ones where 
I don't know if this was right after this happened or a little bit later, but um, Haley asked Valentina, this is like after Sevda has also already left, like, did have you ever considered leaving? Because Valentina, it's established as the second oldest wild one. And Valentina said, yeah, I almost did what Sevda did and just left a note w without like saying goodbye. Um, but then the next day we like got that ping from Eulalie and that's when we brought in like the third wild one and then Valentina said and that gave me a sense of purpose kind of now getting to be like the older sister and getting to walk someone else through it and hold space for someone else so it's kind of just this cycle that they each find meaning in supporting each other and that they they like brought that up on page and recognize that was I thought really meaningful yeah I mean, yeah, again, th this is definitely rare, I think, because so, I mean, not even just YA fantasy in that genre, but I think there are very few books that will mention things for the characters um, that can really make you feel like this is something you feel extremely seen in. Um, it, it will happen often, maybe when you see like a character who looks like you or a character who feels the way that you do, but something like this is usually a topic that we don't touch often. And when we do, it's very timely. So there might right. be like mention of somebody who experienced trauma and that they are struggling, but this is really like, you know, I, I don't even want to say deep dive. I think it's just like, you know, the real like lived experience of a person who has been through something and now kind of gets to open the door for other people to make them not feel so alone. And usually when we see like traumatized characters in books, it's either like maybe in like a fantasy like the Poppy War, it's like everyone's traumatized because there was a war. And so the right. trauma is there, but it's not necessarily like the real main focus of the story. Whereas this is something that's like, we're, we're not just gonna mention there are a couple characters here with a problem and it will be solved by magic in the end. But it really and truly is like, you know, how do you go through this journey? And then how do you make this space for other people who are also in pain and feel misunderstood? And then do you find purpose in that? Is this something that like, you know, you could really dedicate, I don't know, you know, how long Valentina is going to stay with the wild ones, but you know, is this something that you really feel like you would dedicate a significant amount of your time to, mm -hmm. and, you know, like the, I'm sure like shifts in personality that happen because of the trauma that was experienced. And right. Our feelings of like abandonment of like, maybe I should just leave. Like nobody wants me here and I've suffered and sure everyone else has too, but like my pain is hurting me so bad right now. Maybe I'll just leave, like I'll be fine. And then mm -hmm. like the very quick shift that may occur like the next day in that instance of feeling like maybe I, you know, maybe I should hold on. Maybe there is something here for me and you know, very quickly, you do sometimes need to cling to something to give you a sense of purpose, especially yeah. if you're struggling in that way. But I love that it is something that, um, you know, like connects to other people and, and isn't necessarily tied to a specific like gender role in that way, but it's just kind of like a vulnerable thing of like, I, I will create this for you. I will be there for you. Agreed. Um, and there's another theme that kind of comes up a few times because Tarana calls Paheli out for it where uh, Paheli keeps like disappearing or isolating herself or almost like not actually martyring herself, but kind of sacrificing herself and her like compromising her safety under the, the excuse that like, oh, well, I did it so that the rest of you could get back safely. And at one point Tarana is like, no, that's stupid. Like you easily could have just run away and escaped with us all together at the same time but you felt like you had to go and do your own thing. Like what, is it because you feel like that's your purpose or you don't think that your safety is as important or you're trying to like run away, like what? And so repeatedly he starts to call her out for this and she kind of gets a little bit uncomfy because it doesn't seem like she's really unpacked okay. that herself. Yeah, and mm -hmm. as her and Tarana get closer, that's kind of explored more and more at the end of the book. And I thought that was interesting that as kind of the leader of the bunch, you know, everyone else feels this like big debt of gratitude to her for like leading the wild ones and, and coming and giving them a home. Um, but Paheli, for whatever reason, still feels like she's kind of wandering. And so I think that Tarana brings a good balance to her and also is like, no, this is bullshit. Like, what are you doing? 
Um, and they, they kind of do have a lot of conversations about that. See, and that's also something I, I don't see in anything I read usually, where right. like, you actually kind of call out the main character for being like, you know you think you have main character energy, but like in a toxic way. Like you gotta stop doing this stuff to other people in your life. Yes. Like how many how many times have you watched or read something with like usually a YA fantasy type thing? Like, I don't know, like Witch. I loved Witch, like growing up. Great, great mm -hmm. show, great series of books and everything. But it was always like the main character got kidnapped and like they didn't tell anyone their true feelings about this thing because they didn't want to bother anybody about whatever it is. And in the end, like they would get back and nobody would discuss it. It would just be like, it's fine. And I was like, okay, this seems deeply unhealthy as an adult when you look back on this where you're like, why don't you talk to your friends who you supposedly would like, you know, die for, but you don't talk about this type of thing. But, you know, it happens a lot, especially for, I would assume, <laughs> again, because I don't, I, I can't generalize really, but like from the certain experiences that I have or people that I know, oftentimes when you experience something like very hard and you just don't feel like you can tell anybody about it, I do think sometimes you kind of like put yourself in harm's way or mm -hmm. like you kind of like put yourself in situations where it's like, I'll deal with it. And you also can't like admit that you, um, like your pain is the same as other people's pain because you think it's not as bad for yourself. So you kind of do become like this martyr character see you read the book but i'm bringing the trauma so, <laughs> uh -huh. but like yeah i mean i think that's that's cool that that's actually really talked about and it usually is needed from like an outside person that you actually care about to tell you like your pain is valid and you should value yourself more than you do yes. rather than being the leading figure for people who didn't ask you to do that for them yeah Almost right at the end, there's, um, so like Paheli and Tarana develop a relationship and um, there's like more dangerous things that <laughs> happen at the end. And uh, Paheli is like, how can I ever forgive myself for putting you at risk? Like that, that could have been horrible. You could have been so hurt and I would never have forgiven myself. Like you're so precious to me. And Tarana is like, yeah, I know. Like, don't you think that you are also precious to me? And she kind of steps back and is like, oh, no, like, honestly, genuinely, that had never come to my mind because no one has ever thought of me or told me that before. And so then he kind of was like, okay, let's unpack that. <laughs> um, so there's this like really wholesome kind of moment of healing, like right at the end. And like, it was just kind of the perfect cherry on top for what I thought was really healthy communication all throughout the book. Yeah, okay, I, I love that because like we, what we were talking about before with like the characters where it seems like they're mature so that way they have like communication and open communication um sometimes like reading about stuff like that i really do enjoy like we talked about with like the wholesomeness and other times i kind of feel like does anybody actually like you know have these conversations and like realistically talk this way with each other but like you were saying i think it is kind of a product of um like sharing that past pain and then being told by someone that you trust that it is okay to feel that way and then also to kind of like correct that sort of behavior and then truly believe the person telling you that in order to make that change mm -hmm. so it kind of makes me think of like when Paheli and Valentina were like the first wild ones how different were they as people before they really grew as a group and they really shared this and they became this sort of sisterhood with, with this bond between everybody that is a lot more unbreakable than I would think most relationships are because of that sharing and of that caring. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I mean, stuff like that is usually the things that you have to like learn about. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll learn about it in like your twenties or your thirties, but sometimes you don't learn about it. So like, I don't know how old Paheli is, but especially for a group that kind of like secludes themselves and they sort of are like, we are not seen by a lot of people. They kind of only have each other. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of traumatized people really don't have like a healthy mindset about their own well being. So being surrounded by the same people who might also think poorly of themselves, it's possible like they never really had the opportunity to think a different way because it was only the 20 and then 12 of them. Yeah. It definitely set um, a brand new bar for found family. Yeah. I love that.
Oh, I thought you were frozen for a second, but you're back. Oh, no. No, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, shoot, what else was I going to say? Something like, I don't know, I think it left my brain, but that's okay. It might, it might return to me. Also, it's okay. It's okay if you were lost. It was, we did travel to a lot of places. You do not have a tiny brain. Yeah, I feel like this is the type of book that if I had more time, I normally would like write stuff down about Same. each character and what was going on. Um, this is definitely like, this is not because of this book. It's just always like who we are as people where every time we have a book about a book, we're like, well, I won't start it until the day before probably. So I'll take five uh, pages of it, but I won't start it. That's for sure. Like, right. That was like the meme that we always had in college of like, it's due tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Um, yes. And I need to really break myself of that toxic ass habit. <laughs> <laughs> but we made it. I think, let's see, if anyone watching has anything else that you want us to discuss, let us know. Um, I'm gonna look at my little prompts. I think we pretty much covered all of the big themes that they had laid out for us. Um, let's see. Oh, awesome. I got it as an ARC and promptly bought it as soon as it was released. Honestly, I think a good decision. It's a book that I'm happy to own. And like I said before, I think I'm going to annotate it when I eventually do reread it. Uh, something else that's talked about in here is the middle worlders of the wild ones seem woefully ignorant of the importance that the between and human life hold for sustaining their magic. What aspects of our own world does this blindness reflect? The mid-worlders are ignorant of the between, well, of the betweeners and the humans. It says they're ignorant of the importance that the between and human life hold for sustaining their own magic. So in this case, the mid-worlders, the middle-worlders, um, the magic that they had mostly was stuff that like kept them in place. Yeah, the magic sustains them and they can get magic through between diamonds that the wild ones gave them through super rare stars from the keeper of the between um, or they like soak up the magic in these old cities yeah. that were like magic was breathed into by centuries of human nice. life yeah. um, that gives it like personality in a city uh, and they kind of like live off of that but at the same time there's this like I think it's just called the Magic Council or something. Uh, they are um, almost like comically like a, like caricat caricatures of politicians where it's just very like me, me, me. And I don't care about you, 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 as long as I get what I need and I have plenty of power and privilege and time to spend how I want it, even though those people on that council deeply rely on the humans to keep sustaining their cities and the other people in the between to keep supplying them with magic. Um, so I think that was kind of like, like what they're getting at as far as that theme of power and privilege, not recognizing um, the people that supply them with power and privilege. Yeah. I mean, I think usually you don't know what you've got till it's gone <laughs> for the most part. So true. Oh. I'm not going to spoil the ending for you, uh, at least not like the the big climax, because I did like how it how it went down. Um, but yes, I, I thought it was satisfying and I liked the role that the uh, the granddaughter played. I don't know if you've met her yet. No, I have not. Um, but yes, big fan of her, big fan of Valentina. Um, I'll be interesting to know, interested to know what you think of the relationships at the end of the book as well, because I think, I, I don't know, when it started happening, I was like, oh, this seems really fast. Like, are we going to do that YA thing where it happens really fast? But at the end, I was like, no, I'm here for it. Like, I, I love it. And they treasure each other and I'm I'm down. Oh my god, maybe we have to do a Wild Ones part two when I actually finish the book. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure I'll have so many thoughts about what happens. Political structure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in a way, it's almost like 
um, global warming where people just don't believe it's a problem until it affects them. True. In a way. Um, I mean, in other ways, I think if I wanted to get like really, really abstract with it, um, with the question that you posed in the beginning, I think it, it also is kind of like the people who surround themselves with um, more of like monetary gain and like I have to be successful and I have to have money and I have to live this life based on like what I think is so great. Um, usually, I think those people don't necessarily see all of the tiny joys in life or the tiny things that we get from other people. Mm -hmm. So I mean like people who are really, really stuck in like one specific thing with tunnel vision towards that. Um, sometimes like they really don't realize how precious it is, it is to like do something different, like go out into the world and see what's out there or to spend time with a friend and really like learn about their life and see what it is with them. So if I wanted to go like super abstract, you could almost say like the betweeners are kind of like the really like wonderful people in your life that maybe you don't quite get to spend enough time with um, mm. and you don't get to really, you know, be with until they're kind of like out of your life because you've grown apart in some way. And like, you know, the humans are just sort of like everything else, like the tiny joys that you get in life. Like sometimes I just look at something and I'm like, I really like that. I just really, I like that that's, that exists. I like that that's here. I like that I have it right there. I appreciate it, but I don't always look at it and think that I usually just pass right over it. But sometimes you stop and appreciate like those very tiny things in life. And it's sort of what brings you a little bit of added joy and kind of sustains you throughout the day or sustains you throughout your life to feel like I'm living a more joyous life because I have this here. Um, that's my super abstract interpretation of stuff. <laughs> no, I love it. I think that's such a nice take. Like, I, I think that kind of wraps everything up really nicely, actually. Probably the perfect place for us to end our little discussion. I can't believe we already made it to an hour. Wow. Yeah. Um, thank you to everyone, especially Jen, uh, <laughs> who watched with us and hung out with us and for reading along with us. Um, Rachel, would you like to plug anything else that you have happening in the near future? Um, sure. So I am about to go host some reading sprints on my channel um, right now. <laughs> So we're going to be um, sprinting because the Fantasy Series Book Club has like a little thing where we sprint and we read fantasy books and stuff. So um, that's what's going on immediately next. And then also I may have a brand new readathon that will be announced tomorrow. Woo! So keep an eye out for that, assuming that I film, edit, and release it in time. But <laughs> you maniac. Have you not filmed it yet? Nope. <laughs> Classic. Do tomorrow. Do tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's me. You can find me anywhere. I'm let me in the library or let me in the lib on Twitter. But everything else, let me in the library. And uh, that's me. Yay! Well, thank you for reading the wild ones with me and uh, chatting to the peanut gallery about it. The oh, hot yeah. dogs, if you will. The hot dogs. Oh my god. Uh, thank you fellow hot dogs um, <laughs> who are watching and reading with us. Also, there's an Instagram at dog, at, at dog, at hot dog book club. Um, there's also a Fable book club on the Fable app for hot girl book club. So you can check things out there. Our December book is The King of Infinite Space by Lindsay Fay. And it is a modern queer New York City retelling of Hamlet. So I will be diving into that later in December. And that is all we have for you today. And we will see you guys later. Bye, everybody.